Thanks so much, Kevin. And it's the moment that's been terrifying Team Biden for months. Our Robert Kennedy Jr. officially naming attorney and entrepreneur Nicole Shanahan for his running mate as his independent campaign for president heats up. 70% of Americans say that they don't want to have to choose between President Trump and President Biden. They don't want to choose between the lesser of two evils again. Both the Democrats and Republicans are looking at those poll results and they're devising ways to keep me off the ballot. They're trying to keep me off the ballot and to frighten you into choosing between the two tired and unpopular heads of the Uniparty. And Team Biden is launching an all-out effort to stop RFK Jr. from securing any votes. The president's campaign staff has reportedly plotted an entire operation to take down Kennedy. And the liberal media is more than happy to play along. My view is third parties, they're like cockroaches in the kitchen. Okay, it's not what they carry off that upsets you. It's what they fall into and foul up. Let's be clear. A vote for third party is basically a de facto vote for Donald Trump. I don't think it's a smart move to spend a lot of energy attacking Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Uh, I think he's probably a marginal candidate. I don't think he has a big impact on the election. I do worry that Bobby just taking some percentage of votes from Biden could shift the election and lead to Trump's election. Meanwhile, Joe and Kamala are finally hitting the campaign trail together in North Carolina. The Democratic duo trying to ramp up support for the administration's deeply unpopular Bidenomics. You notice the leading economists aren't making much fun of Bidenomics anymore. They're thinking maybe it works to build from the middle out and the bottom up. All right, Dane, I'll go to you first. You know, here we've got Ken, uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. He's anti-big tech. He's anti-censorship. He's pro-environment. Who does he take votes from? Well, right now, I think both Biden, the Biden team came out very strong against him, but the Trump pack did as well, because right now RFK is polling around 24 percent. And if you look at an election that's really, really close, if someone is even going to take, you know, 10 percent, it could make a big difference. And if you wonder if that's true, ask Hillary Clinton about Jill Stein in Michigan mm -hmm. back in 2016. It makes a it makes a difference. And the, the Democratic National Committee, for the first time ever, has stood up an actual formal office within the DNC to just specifically go after third party candidates. I'm Shanahan curious. I'd like to know more about her. <laughs> I don't I think it's interesting that there's somebody like her who is willing to throw herself into the ring. I don't know if she knows what's about to hit her. And you know, Silicon Valley is not the easiest place to be. It can be, you know, knock down drag out fights out there, but the scrutiny she's about to go under is going to be intense. Um, I was surprised in a way that it wasn't Mike Rowe, because he was within the mix. He was on the short list of RFK Jr. And I believe that the, you know, there had been even conversations. And I think he would have been a really interesting choice if you were trying to figure out where to get blue collar workers in the middle of a political realignment that the Republicans and the Democrats are fighting over. If there is an independent streak in America, and we know that there is, Gallup says that there's 30 percent of people say they're Republican, 30 percent say they're Democrat, and the rest say that they're independent. They usually end up voting Republican or Democrat. But if there was a viable third choice, I thought that Mike Rowe was as an excellent communicator, somebody who brings a lot of credibility with him to that fight with that with those voters. I thought that might have been interesting, but he chose Shanahan. And now we shall see. Can I also just say I think it's pretty interesting that this is, I think, the 472nd makeover of Kamala Harris <laughs> and she's being sent out to shore up shaky Biden voters. I mean, yeah. that doesn't make any sense to me. Well, before we get to uh, Kamala, what, what do you think, Jesse, the fact that one of the Kennedys is saying it's a de facto vote for Donald Trump? And, you know, apparently RFK is only on one state ballot so far. He's on a couple, but not all of them. It's a process. And one of the reasons he tapped Shanahan is because she's got deep pockets who can self-fund and help get him access. A lot of people that I know who like RFK weren't thrilled with the choice. They were expecting someone a little bit more electrifying to kind of jolt that ticket and continue the momentum. There's a lot we don't know about her, but she has a lot of money. And you need a lot of money if you're running a third party. If you look at the polls, Judge, Joe's losing to Trump head to head in every battleground still. Mm -hmm. If you introduce RFK, he pulls from both, but he pulls more from Biden. Right now, he's polling in double digits in Arizona, 
Nevada and Wisconsin, and basically at 8-9% in the rest of the swing states. If he gets on ballots and continues to get more face time, he's going to be in double digits in all the major battlegrounds, and Biden will lose this election if he performs like these numbers say. It looks like RFK is just going after the youth vote. He's trying to pick someone who has some young energy. She's in her 30s. And she's telegenic and she's mysterious. So people are thinking, well, who is she? What does she believe? Right now we know RFK Jr. He's intellectually curious. He doesn't speak like a politician. He's for the environment. But he's also for an all of the above energy deal. He's got a great relationship with the black community, but doesn't pander. He's a capitalist, but he thinks there should be checks and balances on corporate abuse. So I think he's a smart man. I like him. I think he's a good guy. I don't think he's going to win the election, mm -hmm. but I think he's going to play a major role. You know, Jessica, what Jesse's referencing is the fact that, you know, Kennedy is polling well in a lot of areas. I mean, you take a Jill Stein, she was at 1%, and, you know, she, but it depends on how it close how the state the election is. is. Right, right. Yeah, it wasn't just Michigan. When you look at the margins, she hurt her as well in Wisconsin, Wisconsin yeah. and in Pennsylvania. So there's your blue wall. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what Joe Biden needs to run. He needs to run exactly the same map, if not better, than he did in 2020. And he certainly is under a lot of pressure in Arizona and Georgia, which were huge pickups for him, where he's down about five points to Donald Trump in the most mm -hmm. recent polling. Um, I, with the RFK Jr. issue, it's, it's not anti-democratic to run against your opponents. That's what you're supposed to do. RFK Jr. isn't even running as a Democrat anymore. He's fully representing another party. He has views and policies that are divergent from what Democrats are supportive of. And he's now going to be obviously heavily funded. And we should note that uh, Nicole Shanahan was the person who paid for the Super yep. Bowl ad um, that the Kennedys flipped out about. Um, but he's also funded by Timothy Mellon, who's a mega donor who also gives to Trump. So 20 million went to RFK Jr., 15 million to Trump. And Steve Bannon encouraged RFK Jr. to run, saying he'd be a useful chaos agent. If Steve Bannon is into you, you are not good for Democrats. And of course, the Democrats are going to stand up and do something about it. And to add to Dana's point, they put Liz Smith in charge of this outfit in the DNC. That's not just we're taking this seriously. That is we are going mm -hmm. to the walls on this. There yeah. is no one better at figuring out a good communication strategy. We probably wouldn't even know about Pete Buttigieg, Pete Buttigieg let alone he would be the transportation secretary, mm. if not for Liz Smith. So yeah. she's the one to blame. Yep. Yes, thank you. Do what you want. And he didn't collapse the bridge. I just want to say something about uh, what's going on in the polling. There has been quite a significant Biden bounce since the State of the Union. So today that he got to North Carolina, he has visited every single battleground state. And there were new swing state polls out this morning from Bloomberg and Morning Consult that showed him gaining in six of seven of the swing states. The only state where Trump is gaining is in Georgia. But he's still losing in yeah. all the battlegrounds. Well, yeah. Okay. Actually, no, so, he's not losing. Yes, let, me, let me get so to Greg. Let's, it depends on what let's poll try to get okay. Greg in here. I would Greg, love to get Greg to in. The, to the extent that Jessica is, is talking about uh, Biden getting, doing better with the polling, isn't it due to Kamala? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, absolutely. She really is the star here. I don't think, you know, I don't think RFK Jr. pulls from Dems or Republicans. I think he is going right where he's supposed to go, which are the independent vo voters. He's a perfect independent candidate. Mm -hmm. He's a little left. He's a little right. He's a little bit exotic. He's an outsider. He's a fresh and forward thinker. He's not as ripped as I am. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, but he taught, but he does, he's doing something no one else is doing, and that's talking about nutrition in food and our food supply in the United States, which is something we don't like to talk about because that's where we make our money. But it's like, it's, it, you know, we can see that we're not a healthy country. I don't know this. I don't know this lady at all. Uh, it wouldn't have been my choice. My choice would have been Kennedy. So because he needs libertarians, right? Oh, our Kennedy. Our I Kennedy. thought you meant no. one of his. Yeah, Kennedys. No, no. So it would be two Kennedys for the price of one. And, like and you get and he gets the libertarian. So I think I think that it's about a split for uh, both mm -hmm. candidates. I will, uh, in terms of the Democrats going after third party candidates, this is a party that claims to be saving democracy. Mm. They're actually saving democracy for themselves. Mm. Right. The running theme in all areas of the Democrat, the modern regressive left of the Democratic Party is the worst thing in the world is another choice. Right. 
They need to protect their incompetence by eliminating comparisons to things that are actually more competent. So this is why they keep, like, for example, if you look at elections, right, the targeting of candidates using nefarious means, look at Trump and now what they're trying to do to uh, RFK Jr., look at education, right? Blocking school choice, preferring to put kids in, you know, minimum security prisons that we call public schools. Then you look at speech, you know, looking at difference of opinions and calling them myths or disinformation or hate speech, right? Because, you know, people can't hear better ideas uh, that might be compared to your irrational delusions. DEI, which stands for didn't earn it. Uh, you know, that's replaced, replaced meritocracy, which is based on the best person winning. So now you have quotas, you know, taking from a de depleted pool of deserving applicants. In every aspect, there is a war on competition. They don't like to win fair and square. Well said. Thank you. Okay. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.